everybody. I've got an action-packed video for you tonight um, focused on capturing data from on screen and cleaning it. And what I wanted to show you was um, something I did yesterday. So I was watching a video from Rick DeGroot about um, unpivoting columns and keeping null values. And as I was watching the video, I thought, hey, I want to capture this data set that he's got. And I want to do some experimentation um, on it myself. And so what I did is there's a there's a Chrome add-in called Blackbox. And it's it's a free add-in. And if you click on it, what you can do is you can brush over an area in a video on screen and it will actually capture the data in that window. And so if we do that, what we'll see here is um, it captured it, it saved to the history. And now if we jump into Power BI, um, what we can do is we can go enter data and paste it. And so if we hit paste, what we'll find is that it actually captured quite well, but it captured in a single column. And so what we want to do is we want to undo our headers here and then take a look at, at how, it, how it pulled the data in. And what we can see is it, it did a pretty good job. So that what we've got is we've got the, the data all correct, um, but we've got every, every 13 rows, we've got a new, a new header and then the, the data that follows. And so if we can put this into, into the four columns easily, then we can do the analysis that we want to do. And the way to do that is with, there are two functions one called integer divide and one called modulo. And we can start here in applying those by just adding an index column to this, um, to this initial column that we've got. And so we start from zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a column and we're going to use this standard function here called integer divide. And what integer divide does is it, when you divide one number by another, it's the number of times that second number goes into the first number. And not, it doesn't look at the remainder. It just looks at the, the integer portion of that, of that long division. So watch, watch what happens here. So we do integer divide. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an integer, integer divide by 13. And you'll see the pattern that develops here. So what we've got is we've now got the first 13 rows, um, which were the date rows, all have a zero. The second 13 rows have a one, the next rows have a two, and the, the last set of 13 rows has a three. So that right there gives us a really good basis on which we can now pivot this data and set it into the four columns that we want. And if we try to do that, let's, um, let's take a look at how that works. So what we do is we go here to um, transform and we say pivot. And what it'll do is it'll ask us for where the values are that we wanna, we wanna pivot. And the, the values are gonna be in this column one but what we don't want to do is we don't want to hit OK now because if we hit OK, what it'll do is it'll count those values instead of actually using the individual values from those rows. So if we turn this aggregate to don't aggregate, now what we should get is a pivot into the, the proper columns. But you can see there's a problem here in that it pivoted everything into the the right column. So we've got, we've got basically the date column, which was the zero group. Then shirts was one, trousers two, and hats was three. But what it did is it put them all on individual rows. And so now we've got to clean all these nulls. So let's, let's see if there's a better way to do this. We could, we could do a group here and then a nested function to take those nulls out, but there's, there's a much easier way to do it. And what we can see here is the way pivot works is you've got this column integer divide that you're pivoting on. You've got this column, which is 
providing the values when you pivot into those those columns for what's going to be in the initial in the individual cells. And what we're doing here with the index column is this is telling it what rows to put the pivot onto. And so the problem that we had was that it's putting the pivot on each individual row because we've got unique values in the index. So what we could do here is if we had if we had a a repeat where what it would do is it would take every every nth row and it would repeat that pattern that what we could do is we could get um we could get the the pivot basically to just pivot into 12 rows instead of 52 rows and so um or 13 rows instead of 52 rows we're going to use the first first rows as headers and so what we can do is we can take advantage of the second part of the long division. So we used the integer part for the, the columns. What we can now do is use the modulo part, which is the modulo is when you take one number and divide by another what the remainder is. And what I'll show you here is if we take this index and we now transform it into the modulo, And we take that same, that same 13 modulo. That what we see here now is we now see a repeating pattern of 0 to 12, 0 to 12, 0 to 12, and so forth. And so now, if we do that same pivot on integer divide, what we're going to get is actually what we want, which is we pivot we do the same change here which is we we take column 1 and then we we don't aggregate it and then we click okay ah and now what we see is exactly what we wanted which is we want everything in 13 rows and and four columns and so what we can do now is we can take and just take that first row, use first row as headers. We can now take and just, in each case, go in here and take the 1.2 out. And that 1.2 was just captured on screen because that is what was showing for a decimal number. And so we can just remove that and do the same for hats. And we've now got a perfectly clean data set to work with. And we can actually take and take that initial index out. And we've got exactly what Rick was working with in the video. So there you have it. Um, that is the way to capture data from on screen and also use the modulo and integer divide functions to develop those sorts of repeating patterns that you can use to clean all sorts of stack data and put those into the proper columns. So um, I hope you found that useful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.